America is waiting for the tax reform bill to pass. Lawmakers are promising to get it done and get it on the president's desk by next week before Christmas. But one of the world's richest men also has his eye on the spending side of the ledger. I spoke with former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer about his new project. It's called USA Facts. I first asked him how the tax bill will impact Americans from every walk of life. Well, with USA Facts, we have this comprehensive database, the numbers, government by the numbers, holding government accountable by the numbers. And so what we're trying to do in this particular case is show what, by the data, what's happened historically, what tax cuts have gone into place, when, what they've meant for the economy, what they've meant for people, what they've meant for the deficit. We have the history. Let's go through some of these slides, Steve, because you do a real specific, detailed job in terms of telling us who pays what and who gets impacted. You think this, the big impact here is on the middle class. Let, let, let me give you a framework that might be helpful, Maria. You say, okay, let's just look at how this impacts the least affluent 20% of America, the next 20%, the third 20 the fourth, and the fifth. The people in the bottom 40% do pay taxes, but the bulk of what they pay is payroll taxes. From an income tax perspective, they're actually getting more credits today, so they are not a net payer of income tax, unaffected largely by this tax plan. People who are in the uh, middle uh, 20 or the you know, sort of the middle 20 or one up, they're getting tax breaks of something from a rate perspective between about 6 and 10 percent, and then if you're in the most affluent 20 percent, you're going to get something like a 3 or 4 percent rate reduction. So yes, it is a middle class tax break, but it also has uh, certainly a tax break perspective for the most affluent people who, of course, already have the biggest tax bills. Let's go through the next slide here, because you just went through what it means for people in terms of each of the, uh, in the groups. The proposed changes to taxes for families, Steve, how do you see that? You look at 40% of Americans who are least affluent, doesn't change their standards of living. If you, as you start to move up, just take people, for example, who make between thirty and $60,000 a year. Uh, as of the last date, 2015, for which the government data was available, and I don't know why the government is so slow to do its reporting. No business would do it this way. Yeah, you're right. People between 30 and $60,000 in 2015, the 2016 numbers literally just came out, Maria, that's about $855 uh, per year average income tax. So a break might be a few hundred dollars for people right there in the middle. When you go up to the top 1%, people are paying on average income tax over $400,000 a year. And now we're talking about a much bigger amount of money, even if it's on a much smaller rate reduction. So will middle class families be better off? Yes. Will appreci appreciably impact that standard of living for the families you talked about? Uh, maybe not so much. Well, one of the issues is the elimination of the state and local tax deduction, right? I mean, when you look at states like New York and California, Illinois, Connecticut, New Jersey, a lot of people use that deduction, and they're going to lose that deduction, and that means their taxes are going to go up, Steve. Right now, because of the deductibility of state and local taxes, in some senses, uh, the rest of the country is subsidizing states uh, that have high state and local taxes. I'm not going to argue whether that's good or bad. I am going to say that it sort of biases where people live and how they flow. And in a sense, I think a lot in this tax plan uh, eliminates uh, what I would call these uh, incentives uh, for behavior that are locked in the tax plan, sometimes just all called complex tax plans and the simplification takes away some of those things. At some point, they are going to have to take a knife to the entitlements and start focusing on how you get that deficit down. I know that, uh, and that debt down, I know that right now growth is the priority, Steve. Uh, I think it's great for growth to be a priority. And certainly, uh, I would expect, just looking again at the data from the past, uh, that we should expect to see continued rapid increase in the investment by businesses in the long term. That means capital and R&D. That should help fuel growth. On the other hand, uh, as a 
big proponent, my wife and I, are in our philanthropic activities to make sure that we have a chance at the American dream for even the least affluent kids in America. I would hate to see any of the support for those kids go out, uh, if you will, with the bathwater in terms of budget cuts. So people can look at entitlements, but boy, I sure hope we keep things that are essential uh, for the chance for opportunity for kids because they couldn't control where they were born or who their parents were. Let's look at this uh, this slide on capital gains. You've got capital gains taxes paid versus the S&P 500. Steve, make the connection. Well, important thing probably to, to say here uh, is if you look at since the time of the last corporate uh, tax change, uh, the biggest gainers, if you will, have been people who own stocks. Wages and salaries have gone up, but capital gains have risen much faster than wages and salaries. The benefits have accrued to people who own stocks. And I think with the corporate tax cut being proposed here, it's not about the corporations, it's about their shareholders. And there will be a return to people who own shares. That, of course, tends to be the more affluent people in our society. Uh, we see that already. The market seems to have pinged up on the anticipation of this uh, corporate tax rate change, which makes equities more valuable. Now, we hope some of that also flows through to wages and earners, but I'm pretty sure we can expect to see uh, positive returns to people who are fortunate enough to own shares. Well, when, when you look at the corporate side of this plan, the corporate rate coming down to 20 percent, the pass-through rate getting a big de uh, deduction as well, that's really the jewel of this plan. So you have to believe that shareholders are going to do well here because companies will have more money on hand to invest and, and, and grow profits. Well, it's yes, I hope shareholders do well. If the trade-off is shareholders doing well and us having a much bigger deficit, as a shareholder myself, and yeah. I'm, a, you know, I'm not generalizable, but I think it's dangerous to think about that as a simple trade-off. All right. My thanks to former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer.